Hello, welcome to the first episode of Worth It or Not Worth It. Basically, I tell you which game is good or bad. <laughs> Shovel Knight. I have this game for my 3DS. Let's see if it's bad or good. This game is like an old classic NES game. And I mean like an old classic NES game. Well, I mean not old, old but you know. The game is pretty short, but it's hard. So, you can't really beat it in 20 minutes. So, uh, let's press A. Oops, uh, I guess I pressed B. You can't press A? What button is it? It's B? Why B? Can't it be A? You even have to press A to, to play the game on the 3DS home screen. I think I know why they did this. It's because an NES controller has a D-pad, A, and B. And the game uses Y and B. So Y is B, and B is A. Well, that kind of stinks. So, so you get a cutscene when you play the game. Yeah, but who the heck cares, let's just start the game. So, you start off with a shovel and kill enemies in the game, so that's fine. On the D-pad or the control stick in order to, uh, dig pogo stick like- But the controls feel familiar. Hmm. Wait, bubbles hurt you? Even with this armor, unless they're acid bubbles. That makes sense. Well, there's a secret area. Let's go there. What is that? Magical paper that can give me special powers? It looks magical. Well, apparently, you give it to this guy in yellow. And what does he do? He plays music from the sheet of paper. Sell my magic sheet for 500 gold. I found the decadent dandy would- All of that just for a music paper? In almost every level, you- there is a music sheet. Why would you risk that? Well, I'm on the first boss. I wonder how this is gonna be. <laughs> ah! Well, as you complete the level, you get the Super Mario Bros. 3 map. G'day everyone, I'm glad you're here because- Oh, that's right. I have to press B to get to the level. Every level has a boss in them. There's King Knight, uh, Specter Knight, Mole Knight, Tinker Knight, which is my favorite. But there's not much I can say about those levels, other than they're just hard and some levels get harder. Also, when you when you die, you don't lose a life. Thank gosh. Instead, you lose money. Basically, the money is for buying armor or stuff like that. So it's not like Super Mario Bros. where you have to hit a block to get a power up. Also, there's checkpoints in the game. Again, thank gosh. You know, most of the time you fall a lot in this game. It would be really nice if they had a run button, but you can break the checkpoints. Basically, if you break the checkpoints, you get a lot of money. But it's not worth it, because if you break the checkpoint, you lose it. So you would, leave, you would lose even more money. What were they thinking? Well, spoiler warning. Once you get to the Enchantress, which is the last boss, she shoots magic and breaks blocks and does this weird dash diagonal thing. So bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, that actually worked. I can hit her attacks back. Which is something I've failed to do um, with pretty much every boss battle before this. What's happening? Ah! Oh. And after you beat her, you fight this. Battle. And I'm afraid that if I die, I'm probably going to have to do this again. Also, you team up with your wife, 
or girlfriend. I don't know. She's called Shield Knight, which is who you're trying to save in the game. Uh, I don't know. And then you save the world. I think I know what this game feels like. Legend of Zelda 2 for the NES. It's an exact copy of Legend of Zelda 2. Similar attacks. <laughs> Enemies. And there's a town? Love. Return things to the bard? Maybe? Do I have enough? One answer. Is it worth it? And that is a yes! I talk bad about this game, but once you get used to it, it gets easier. I give this game an 8 out of 10.